another feeder that is essentially a tube feeder. This one's all metal. Everything on it is metal. Simple tube like a chimney here, chimney metal. A conical metal top and a, bit, a tray that's dish-like tray that's attached to the tube with a, four tabs. Simple top opens up. You fill it up with uh, mixed seed or sunflower seeds and then uh, put it out and the nice thing is it holds a lot of seed so this will go will be uh, pretty good for a few days usually before you have to fill it again. Now here we have a lot of blue jays as you can probably hear in the background and I haven't even started feeding yet but some years we'll have 50 to 100 blue jays and they can empty even my largest feeders in a day or two. Here's one of the fancier store-bought type tube feeders. This is a square tube, uh, but essentially the same thing. About eight ports on this one for feeding. The copper top comes off. It has also holes in the bottom that enable seeds to fill this tray here. So far I haven't found that the birds seem to like this one very much. I'm not quite sure why. Um, maybe in time they will get more used to it and then come to it but just raises a point that even though a lot of people like to have the fancier looking bird feeders and bird houses and things like that hanging in their yard for the for the sake of the attractiveness of their yard often these the more attractive or uh, elaborate the feeders are the less the birds actually like them so these earlier feeders I've been showing that were you know, wooden feeders or handmade feeders out of wood, they often are the most effective for uh, uh, having birds come to them. I, I think they just find them simpler to enter and exit and hang on to and, and that type of thing. Plus they actually, I, personally I find they look quite nice uh, once they start to get more weathered and rustic. And they blend in with the environment better than a a bright red or a bright yellow feeder or you know high high metal gloss paint finish or whatever that doesn't really attract the birds the last main types of feeders I'm going to talk about are what are known as suet feeders suet feeders are typically little cages now I'm talking about suet that you would buy in the cake form and these you, most people have seen those wherever you go. They sell them in grocery stores. They sell them in specialty food, wild food bird feeding shops. They sell them in uh, agricultural supply shops. So they're basically little cages made out of rubber coated metal. That, uh, the ends usually open up in some fashion to allow you to put the six by six inch square uh, suet cakes inside. This one actually holds two of them, both sides open. They just clamp shut with the little things on the side. Then you hang them up with the suet cages, or with the suet inside. So these are very, it's very useful to feed suet through the winter. Uh, a lot of birds need that high energy fat. The suet cakes that you typically get also are a mixture of seeds, as well as the suet and oftentimes even little chunks of berries and fruit are put in there. So for woodpeckers, nuthatches, chickadees, blue jays, sometimes even the sparrows I've seen at them, those are the main birds that you're gonna have come to suet. Now in addition to the suet cakes, you can also put beef fat, which you can get at butcher shops or sometimes they sell it cheaply in the grocery stores or the uh, um, food stores butcher shops sometimes they'll give it to you because they're just getting rid of it but that's the big white chunks of beef fat they're fairly solid and you can cut them up into size specific sizes to fill into cages like this or you can string them up separately on the side of a tree and that's a very uh, cheap good form for the birds as well it doesn't have the seeds in it but the fat alone is quite uh, good for the birds and a lot of them seem to almost prefer that over the cakes in some cases. Um, but a good food source to supply in one form or another to the birds in your yard. This is just an example of a larger suet cage. This one will hold about six of those 
typical suet cakes. Uh, be just because of the size of it, the end opens here. And then as you pull this chain, it closes, just the weight of it closes the end shut, which is a neat little design. And then it has these two little folding side bottoms that come down and enables perching birds to perch there. The woodpeckers don't really care about that. They'll just grab onto it. So you can hang this from a branch. Sometimes I'll hang it close to the side of a tree just so it rests on the tree, which enables woodpeckers to, to, uh, to come right down the tree and just grab into or bite into it that way. You could hang it from a hook like this as well uh, or any other type of hook from a tree. Just a word about hanging hooks. I find these at some of the local hardware stores or dollar stores. They're just two foot long, rubber coated metal wire, stiff wire, and with a little curl on each end or an S hook on each end. And these are great handy uh, hanging hooks that I, they're probably sold mainly for hanging plants, but they're good for hanging bird feeders or suet cages, different bird feeding items that you might want to hang from branches or other hooks if you want to get them up higher onto higher branches. I find them very useful. I've got probably 10 of these that I uh, use for different things. Sometimes I'll hang a suet log like this, which is basically a, a, a piece of short piece of wood with one inch holes drilled into it to a depth of about a inch or an inch and a half. And uh, the suet or peanut butter you can put in there, mix up peanut butter and suet. You can put in there and the woodpeckers really like that. But I was just gonna say, I, I often hang these logs with uh, a hook like this. I've lost the eye hook that I had drilled into the end of this right now, but that's another good way to hang various things like suet logs. This is another homemade tube-like feeder, but this one's basically screen that's been stapled to a wood frame, just mainly a piece of back wood, and then two end chunks, and the screen is stapled around it, and then I have built a little plug of wood that goes into a hole here, and with a piece of clothesline uh, wire through it, and crimped at the bottom and basically I fill this up with uh, either black oil sunflowers in the shell sometimes I can buy them out of the shell too and they'll sit in here they fall out a little bit but they tend to stay in for the most part but I primarily use this for peanuts out of the shell cracked peanuts I can buy locally out of the shell and the birds come here and pick it out pick out uh, the shell pieces from within the screen so this is a a favorite feeder that the birds really like. This one's getting a little bit ratty here due to squirrel damage, but uh, so I probably need to rebuild that. But um, that's another type of feeder you can build quite easily, cheaply, uh, and is very useful for the, for uh, feeding the birds. And again, nut hatches, chickadees, um, woodpeckers really like to come to these feeders. When you're considering bird feeder placement. There's a few things to consider to help protect the birds as much as possible. Now again, for the winter, uh, things change quite a bit. These shrubs behind me will, won't have their leaves anymore, but th these are very dense shrubs. These are actually uh, forsythia as well as a snowball bush. They have a dense tangle of fine twigs, uh, even once the uh, leaves have left that a lot of the birds, the small birds in particular, find really nice because if danger comes, either in the form of uh, avian or mammalian predators, they can jump out of the feeder and into here for protection, at least until the uh, danger goes away. So when you put a feeder out, it's a good idea to try and put it close to cover uh, if you have any cover. So things like coniferous trees, cedar and spruce and pine, those are other good choices. Ideally, you don't want to put the feeder out in the middle of your lawn if you've got a 200 by 200 area of pure lawn with nothing else. You don't want to really put the feeder out in the middle. 
Um, ideally, you'll like these shrubs here, I often will sprinkle seeds underneath them in the winter, just again because it's an area of dense cover. If the birds get attacked in there by something, they can just pop up into the branches of these shrubs and have a lot of protection until the uh, threat moves on. Here's another example of a place that might be good to put a bird feeder. This is a elderberry shrub that's growing at the edge of a small woodland here on the farm. And as you can see, it's uh, got lots of a tangled we uh, web of trunks and twigs that can, even in the winter without the leaves, will provide a lot of protective cover for small birds if they need to try and uh, get away from a predator of some type. One thing you will encounter uh, almost inevitably when you're feeding birds is the fact that sometimes the bird eating hawks will discover that there's a lot of birds in your yard and they may hang around in the winter trying to uh, catch some of the birds while they're feeding. So it's one of the uh, uh, issues when you think about feeding birds is that you will be drawing birds in in fairly large numbers in some cases which can attract the attention of these hawks. Usually each winter I will hang some sort of a feeder in this oak tree too that we have behind our house. It's not too far away from some coniferous trees to the east so while it is fairly isolated on its own um, I'll often hang a suet feeder here or sometimes one of the uh, tube feeders that has multiple ports on it uh, and the finches can sit up in the tree and the woodpeckers like the trunk of the tree to uh, adhere to go up and down. Here's an example of a little garden structure I built quite a few years ago uh, and it's getting pretty well covered in lichen and whatnot now but it's, it, it was a little cedar structure with a little roof thing and uh, here you can see I've got a candle lantern hanging on it. But we also have shrubs growing all around it now, as you can see, H huckleberry, or honeysuckle, sorry, on this side and uh, yew over here. So this could, is an example of a place that would be good to hang a feeder on again because it's providing cover for the birds to get into if they need to, not only to escape predators, but uh, to give them cover from the wind, harsh winter winds also while they're feeding. If you have conifer trees of any type in your yard or around your house, those make good areas to position feeders. As I mentioned before, in these shrubby areas out the front of our house with these dense forsythias, I like to spread seed underneath of them for the ground feeding birds. You can see how dense the, these shrubs are. Now the leaves will disappear in a month or so and then it'll be just a mass of twigs overhead but it still allows them a lot of protection. Now one thing I will say is that if you have cats in your neighborhood wandering at will then you may want to think twice about feeding on the ground because cats will find these places as well and sit in hiding in there and be on the attack when the birds come to feed. So in essence you'd be attracting the birds to a greater threat if you were to put feed there on the ground. True for wherever you live uh, but probably more so in the cities where cats are often roaming at free will.